All right, today is the day, and it is again Leviathan Tuesday. We are looking today at doing some alteration of the mounting points on the chassis. Now with the original Silverado, of course, had a cab and a pickup bed, and we are shifting our cab forward, and there will be no bed, of course, but the cabin, the living area, will be a little bit longer than the bed was. So the mounting points for those on the chassis don't line up exactly the way they would have on the pickup truck, compared to us building a van. So we do also need to keep the two portions separate, the cab and the cabin, so that when the articulation of the chassis that they can move without tearing things apart, being one continuous thing. Um, being difficult in that in a motorhome, you can just make the chassis as stiff as possible so that it just is one big box that moves with the chassis. And in four-wheel drive situations, you want as much flexibility as you can in that chassis to keep the wheels down as long as you can. So we're going to try to keep that articulation in there. And so to do so, we are going to have to create different mounting points for the cab and the cabin. Now for the cab, which we're going to look at today, we are having to take one of those mounts that originally was a cab mount. And we had to trim it off because it had some interference with our larger tires. And by trimming it off, we're also going to lift it up, make it a lot taller. But that's our project for the day. Let's jump in and take a look. So here is the original cab mount in question. And as you can see, it kind of sticks out there. And I won't go through articulating the wheel through its rotations, but it does bump into that thing. So we need to trim it off. Now you can imagine if somebody was trying to put very large tires on this when it was the original Silverado, it would have been uh, impossible, of course, to put 40 inch tires on there because you certainly could trim out your uh, fenders, your quarter panels, but you wouldn't want to be able to ch chop off your chassis mount. So we have the opportunity to do that because we are just using this thing as a bare bones chassis. But we need to trim this thing off right about an inch and a half off of the face of the chassis itself. And then we will be taking some uh, heavy gauge sheet metal we've had cut just for this job to uh, replace this mount and make it a little bit taller and stand over the center of the chassis rails themselves. So once that thing's off, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, swing it around, just kind of check it, make sure. And uh, I was pretty sure before we did this, but that verifies everything that it will now clear everything. Once we get our new thing, Try that piece of sheet metal in there. Not gonna have any different problems. So here's all the pieces of sheet metals uh, assembled as a test fit. And we're gonna now have to go in and weld it all up. Of course, it's much easier to take it to the bench, um, weld it in the horizontal surface, rather than trying to assemble this thing on the chassis. So this has uh, the one main tower piece, we'll call it which is made up of a couple of bends and a couple of bends created by welding. And then there's two other pieces that are going to be bolted to the chassis. Now they were, uh, I just kind of designed those to meet up with some existing holes in the chassis. I didn't want to actually weld on the frame rails, the chassis rails themselves. Um, it's always kind of a dangerous thing if you have to weld too long. I don't think, of course, this would have been very long beads to weld, but when you run long continuous beads on a chassis, you do have the problem of maybe annealing any kind of a temper that's in the metal and ruining and maybe creating a bent frame situation for yourself in the future. So this is all designed so that it's only welding to that little uh, cab mount that was existing before. And so we get us about an inch and a half away from, like I said, the main frame rails. So this uh, main tower piece welding up on the bench here. Now it does have a problem in that the only part that's going to be welded to that old cab mount is a piece of sheet metal that has no lateral stability. It'll be basically kind of flexing as it leaves the welded area. So I've taken a couple of uh, one inch heavy walled steel pieces of square tubing had a little pie mouth in it and bent it over just to get a nice uh, tapered end on the top. And then I'll be welding that to the face 
of our main tower piece just to give it some stability in that like any kind of lateral force that'll be pushing out away from the side of the vehicle towards the outside, which will happen a little bit on the new cab mount that comes down and meets this new tower. So here we are welding those uh, piece of box section or those square tubing onto that outer face of that tower. Like I said, this will create some rigidity in that uh, lateral forces that might hit it. And then taking up the forces that the cab will be exerting, pushing it back towards the rear of the vehicle are these two pieces of sheet metal that, like I said, they bolt to the chassis and then bolt to this tower. Now this is also to create a system whereas I did not have to move any of the brake lines which run right alongside this uh, mounting point trying to make this whole system go together so that you don't have to do a lot of alterations like uh, putting in new brake lines, which would have been just a pain. So this tower will actually span across the brake lines, making it a little bit easier to uh, replicate this once we get this prototype finished. So once we get this uh, steel tubing onto this tower piece, we're gonna take it back out and install it onto the chassis. This is also going to be the situation where you're able to replicate this by somebody else out in the field. So these pieces will, of course, match up perfectly on any Silverado chassis from like, say, 98 on into 2006 or 7, I believe. And here you can kind of see how the tower spans across those brake lines. And in a trial fit here, I found there's just a little bit of high point in one corner you know, take that down so that I get things a little more flush so that we get a little better weld along two tighter gaps. Now, one of the pieces of the bolt-in assembly is already onto the chassis there. and We're going to use it to kind of hold this tower in position. But I also have a trying to make these at the exact same height as the rear mounts as well. And so I've got this piece of... Uh, angle aluminum that I'm going to bolt or clamp to the rear subframe mounts and it'll just give me the height that I need. So I'll pan back here and you can see like I said here's the old uh, bed mounts. That piece of angle sits across those two comes to the front gives me my height. I can adjust that height a little bit by those uh, bolts on the chassis. Got those mounted, tightened up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start welding this thing in place. My tower was slightly narrower than the old mount, so I pounded it in. Go ahead and run a bead up along that thing. I was able to, uh, outside this video, weld up a little bit around the backside as well by those brake lines, just being careful not to hit those. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the flapper sander and go ahead and clean things up really nicely. Of course, want to have it nice and smooth and clean because this might be an area where if you're going to climb under the vehicle to check on the suspension or those things you have to do in a 4x4 when you're trying to figure out what problems are or get around obstacles. So get it all polished up nicely, take off all the sharp edges, clean it up, get ready to seal it and paint it. Now I have some of this uh, rust inhibiting paint. It's kind of a primer based product that is sold by Eastwood that I will be uh, coating these things with real well and then coming back with a good chassis black paint and finishing them up. We're going to spray those in those cracks and crannies as best we can. Seal this up. Now this paint can also have a little tube that I can stick into it and uh, paint on the insides of the chassis. You might have seen that originally when we painted this chassis. Let's go back and reassemble things a little bit now. There's uh, one of the pieces that goes back and bolts the chassis. 
And here's the other one. Like I said, these things will place rigidity in the reverse. And there is one ready to go. All right, so there you go. We have that subframe mount ready to go when that cab gets here. Um, we'll get the other side done. Didn't need to show you both of those in this video. You get the idea of how one goes in. The other one will just be the same. But we'll get that other one in and the two of them painted up with some good chassis black. Keep them coated and sealed away from rust and preventative. But anyway, that is our video for today. We will also be getting some other mechanical things doing in some upcoming videos. Like I said, getting ready for that cab to show up. But anyway, thanks for stopping by today. Come back and see us again.